1982, February 16th. After wintering in Egypt and Israel, we returned to Athens, Plaka area, where we felt at home. Wining, dining, and carousing, etc. And we were out at a bar one night when our hotel room was robbed. We lost our camera, traveler's checks, and my passport. It was a lot of hassle, but I did get a new temporary Canadian passport and we were issued some replacement traveler's checks. So it was time to leave there and rediscover Europe. Head north for spring. We left via train to Patras, beginning the use of our two-month Eurail passes. We had beer in the train bar car and in Patras. We got boat tickets and boarded the Venezia, an Italian ship in the Adriatica line. Aboard, we sat in the bar uh, deck area and drank Heineken all evening, visiting with other young travelers until about 1 a.m., then snoozed on a couch in that area until 6 a.m. February 17th, we stopped in Corfu. I had a headache, so I had a few beers, but that didn't help much, until we neared Brindisi. Docked about 4.30 p.m. and snuck off the boat. Decided to take the 9.15 p.m. train to Rome, and that evening in Brindisi we had a good supper in a pizzeria, but the wine, which the waiter called house wine, looked homemade and murky. We got it down slowly. The next day, February 18th, we arrived in Rome at 8 a.m., Got a room in a pension and went down to Trevi Fountain and hung out in the sun all afternoon watching people. February 19th, Friday. It was cloudy and rainy. So I found a little chrome shiny bar to sit in and write while I sipped a Peroni beer. It was a find in Rome. Most bars don't even have tables and chairs. That evening we found a nice little restaurant where the waiter spoke English quite well and was most helpful. We had a good meal with a liter of white wine and were amazed that there was no cover or service charges. We knew we'd be back there. The next day, visited the Sistine Chapel, cruised through. Although I enjoyed it, it was too much. Sat outside by the obelisk in Piazza San Pietro for a while, watching people, and then went for lunch. In the evening, going out for supper and some wine, ended up choosing a place that was kind of too much. Had a liter of white wine, two bowls of soup, two plates of noodles, and came to 12,000 lira. What a rip-off, but we're used to that. On the way out, we pocketed buns and breadsticks as meager consolation, but we didn't quite have the nerve to steal a bottle of wine. <laughs> Sunday, February 21st. Walked down uh, Piazza Popolo to the Spanish Steps area and went there for a view. Lots of people hanging out. Walking down via Vittorio Emanuel, we stopped at the Corso Bar. It was kind of expensive, so we left. Later, we decided to try a restaurant near our little hotel that we liked the looks of. Service was slow, but we enjoyed two liters of wine, soup, and a pizza. All very good, and we talked of old times. The next day was Monday, February 22nd. Spent some time walking the streets again and down via Veneto and came across the American Library, just like the one in Athens. Went in for a good read. Found a Rolling Stone magazine. The current issue had a record review of the latest Black Sabbath, which was so hilarious that I cut it out to save. That evening we went down the Tavola Calda restaurant on Via Perisperna for a late supper. Enjoyed red wine, great soup. What a meal. Excellent food and service, and oh so cheap. Tuesday was a dry day, a bit of a write-off, really, and so Wednesday, February 24th, we got out of Rome on a 9.25 a.m. train bound for Florence, but we had to get off in Milano about 5 p.m., spent the evening there, had soup and lasagna and wine, and with uh, an amazing Joker character from Lebanon at the next table who was sympathetic to our poor Italian skills. Uh, he was arguing that pizza is better in America, Italy is no good, etc, etc. Anyway, we were waiting for a train to get out of there, so we agreed with him. After a very expensive beer at the station bar where the cashier ripped me off boldly, even though I argued, we finally did get out on the 1050 Riviera Express. Thursday, February 25th. Germany looked cold under a snow blanket. Our train was late and we arrived in Cologne sometime after 12 noon. 
wandered around waiting for a connecting train to Eindhoven. Once there, we phoned to Reusel, spoke to our Winnipeg friend John, found out we'd missed Carnival. So we spent the evening drinking and walking about downtown Eindhoven, stayed in the friendly youth hostel. Friday. Met up with John, and the three of us went drinking and talking in several different bars before and after supper. Drank until about midnight, but no one could drink seriously enough. So we arranged to meet again on the next day, Saturday. That evening had a good supper with excellent soup and sausages, and it was off to the bowling lanes for a game of ten pin. And we had beers and beers and went to another bar for more glasses of pills until finally we had to catch the last bus back to the hostel. The next day we took an afternoon train back to Colne and wandered about town eating crepes and looking for things to do. Found a small bar and drank for a while, then decided to walk again. Found a sort of a soup kitchen type room and got food and hung out there for a while then back to the train station drinking with the weirdos until we finally got away on a train at 10.30 bound for Berlin. Couldn't have a compartment to ourselves though. Because there were so many passport and ticket checks, I got no sleep at all by the time we arrived in Berlin at 7 a.m. March 1st. Decided to seek out one of the pensions we'd seen advertised and ended up taking a beautiful big classy old room for 55 marks a night. A lot of money, but those beds sure look good. Went straight to sleep and didn't get up until 2 in the afternoon. Stayed in all evening with a little wine. Next day, walked all over downtown Berlin, saw some neat shops and bars on the way back towards the pension and had expensive beers in one called Joe's Beer Salon. With his, his plan for music was promising Tony Sheridan. That evening we headed into the student area to look for bars and drank in two very different ones. Wednesday, March 3rd, decided to go see East Berlin today. Took the subway to Checkpoint Charlie. We had lunch there of meat, potatoes, veggies, and beer. Hearty cafeteria-style meal and wandered around downtown. Dropped into various places to warm up. It was, it was a cold gray day. Had a beer with the derelicts in a cheap cafeteria. Later in the afternoon, had expensive beers in a hotel lobby and wrote postcards back to Canada. Finally wandered far enough and found a decent restaurant that evening. A pub with common young people in it. We ordered beers and each had a plate of food. Couldn't tell what we were getting though. Uh, I was stuck with uh, a mound of foul sauerkraut, fatty meat and some weird pieces of almost raw bread. I ate what I could, but I could not finish it. We laughed about our weird experiences in that city. Nothing was very cheap. There wasn't much of anything, and third, what there was wasn't much good. <laughs> East Berlin. Next day, back in West Berlin, slept in, but were out on the street before noon eating waffles at a stand. Then walked through the student area and finally settled in a bar with good music and drank six rounds of big mugs of beer whilst discussing our lives. Friday, March 5th. It was cold today, so we took the first train out. Arrived in Hanover at 5 p.m. Made a swift connection for a train to Gottingen. There we found the youth hostel and checked in. Ate at Hamburger Farm. Then later in the evening had a beer at the Pegasus, a sleaze bar, and walked home by 9.45. I was alone in a little dorm room until in came four German guys and three girlfriends with three bottles of wine. They were all right friendly students who shared with me. Everything was hunky-dory. Next day, we ended up spending the afternoon drinking at the Pegasus pub again, where I got philosophical for a while in my own peculiar way. Must be the effect of this university town and the sleazy punks in this bar. Sunday afternoon saw us on a train to Gosler, where we looked around for two hours at the pretty old buildings. Then another train to Sella and a youth hostel there where we went out for supper and beers. Uh, next day a train to Hamburg and arrived in the huge station at 2.30. Took the subway to the youth hostel. Then went out walking along the harbor to the university area. Where we had a cheap cold supper at the Menza Cafeteria. Veggie salad, potato salad and meat of some kind. My friend having mash shaped like a hamburger. Mine was chicken looking but pork tasting. 
uh, Tuesday, March 9th. Lots of misadventures. Set out walking, looked up and down the Reaper Bomb. Headed off towards the student at the university area, stopping to rest in a small bar where after one beer we had another and got talking to a very friendly German sailor who'd been around the world. He bought us around and we chatted for hours. Nice guy named Manfred told us about nightclubs. Although he wasn't into rock, he knew about it and he had seen the Beatles. That's what they all say in Hamburg. Anyway, we finally left and went out to the Logo Club where we paid a lot to get in. Saw a live band, Johnny and the Drivers, but they weren't that great. We sat through two sets. They were English lads, but too old to be New Wave. Wednesday, March 10th. After breakfast, we walked around, visited an art gallery, then took the train to Copenhagen, which included a ferry ride. The whole train was loaded into the hull of the ship. In Copenhagen, brought groceries for a mad dash into Scandinavia. Went to the city youth drop-in center and sat in a coffeehouse-style bar for a while. Then the night train to Stockholm. Uh, Thursday morning, got talking to a funny-dressed Scottish lad going the same direction. He knew more about Canada than anyone we had met so far. He was a regular bum and had been all over Europe. Uh, boarded the Swedish train together. He sat and talked to us and offered us cocoa and biscuits, etc. Got a little sleep, but not enough before we arrived at Stockholm about 9.30 in the morning. Spent the day in a coffee shop, had cookies and a small glass of milk. Then later met Gordon the Scott lad again and took the subway to Rostown. Train to the harbor and boarded at 5.30 p.m. The Silja Line Finlandia ship going to Helsinki. A huge classy cruise boat with elevators and eight floors. We were sent to the seventh floor, found bunks in a little cabin. Arrived in frozen Helsinki at 9 a.m. Friday morning. Out into the cold, snowy day. It felt good, just like Winnipeg. Chanced upon an open market. Tents of fresh fruit and flowers while the snow drifted down around the little orange tent kiosks. Went into one that was a cafe and had breakfast. Heaters made it cozy. I had tea and we tried some hot meat pies, which were really tasty. Later in the day, caught the 10 p.m. overnight train north to the Swedish border. Saturday morning, changing trains, meeting up with Gordon again. Stuck with that crazy man all day, but he's funny. The Swedish customs man went through his suitcase and we were chuckling as we watched him puzzle over Gord's junk, all in piles of plastic bags. We went to Karuna and got off with him there. Waited in a bar, over three beers, then split apart for the night. We rented a bungalow, walked to the edge of town, finally found our cozy little cabin. Sunday. Boarded the train to Narvik, way up in the Arctic Circle now, further north than I've ever been before, even in Canada. The scenery was getting mountainous, and finally we saw the tip of a fjord. Reached Narvik about 3 p.m., walked in that small downtown, wanting to have a bite. Finally found a high-priced cafe, had a sandwich, cake, coffee, and a delicious cinnamon sweet icing filled pancake roll. Crying about the cost, but getting on a bus at 5 p.m. to see the scenery along Norway's coast, crossing fjords by ferry. Uh, that evening, switching back to a train for an overnight ride to Trondheim. 9 a.m. changing to a modern express to Oslo. It was dirty and raining there, but we found a great looking smorgasbord and went for it, piling up our plates. I overdid it. It took more than my shrunken tummy could hold. Saw the sights there and reluctantly decided to take another overnight train south, boarding at 10.40 for Copenhagen. Tuesday, March 16th, halfway through our Eurail passes, decided to go to the Tuberg Brewery and drink a few beers to see if it would clear things up. The tour was in Danish, but a friendly local drunk did some translating. It was boring until we got to the end and started drinking. Had fun, but were only allowed two beers, but they gave us packages of souvenirs. Spent the afternoon at the Use It Center's easygoing beer hall and laughed at a drunk Swede who was befriending everyone and us and being silly. Finally got out on a 6 p.m. train to Hamburg, which was chilly and dreary, but we checked into our old favorite youth hostel again. Next day, left 
town at 10.35 on a comfy train to Cologne, where again we enjoyed walking up and down, visited an art gallery, then train to Eindhoven to retire to our favorite youth hostel there. The next day, back in Amsterdam, we checked out the last waterhole bar, the Perina Hotel, and the youth hostel, and decided on a night in the Perina. Walked around a lot and had a few beers, came back to our, our restaurant in our hotel and drank for a while, had a bowl of tasty soup. Friday, didn't get up early enough to make it to the Heineken Brewery, so visited the Arts and Crafts Center instead. Had a beer in the bar there. Then back to the hotel restaurant for a wonderful supper, big plate full of salad, just right fried potatoes, cutlets with great mushrooms, spicy gravy sauce, glasses of wine, dessert of chocolate pudding with whipped cream. Wow. Followed by a beer. Then to the last water hole for another drink fest. Got in early and had a pitcher. Even though the bartender didn't remember us from last year, we enjoyed Willie Ray and the Saddle Swords, a live band. They did a first set of standard country greats, including a rock version of Will the Circle Be Unbroken. The second set was long, so I got a fourth pitcher of beer. Uh, by that time I was bloated and drunk. don't remember walking back to the hotel, but we had a good time until next day Saturday when the hangovers hit us. Locked up our bags at the train station and went to the flea market. I was giddy and joking around a lot, enjoying my hangover for a while. I ate, had milkshake and hamburgers, more fries and later more fries with that wonderful hot peanut butter sauce. Finally took the train to Eindhoven to stay at the old youth hostel we know and love so well. Sunday decided to do a quiet day of sightseeing and went north to the tip of the Netherlands at Den Helder where we walked through town to the dike wall and looked out at the sea. Rode back to Amsterdam and headed to the youth hostel but walked past the old Hudson Hotel where we'd first stayed in. Got the urge to stay there once again and got a very nice room. Had supper in the Pizzeria Lily downstairs. I had a margarita which was plain tomato and cheese and it was paper thin but cheap and good. And back to the last water hole for one last time to see a band called Old Tennis Shoes. After two short sets and one pitcher, went back to our March 22nd. It's five months since we landed here in Amsterdam. Got up early to go to the Heineken Brewery Tour. We were in line at 9.30 for the once a day 10 a.m. tour. A huge crowd formed behind us. Over a hundred people. The guide spoke very fast and whipped us through in no time. Soon we were in the reception hall drinking glasses of draft beer and eating cheese and cheesies. Drinking as fast as we could because we didn't know how long they'd give us in there. While they showed us a 10 minute film on how great old man Heineken had been and his company still is. We laughed and cheered until they cut us off and cleared us out. By noon we were almost pissed. Took a train to Rotterdam that afternoon to visit some people and stay in the youth hostel there. Tuesday morning had the breakfast of bread and jam and tea. Then caught a 9.30 a.m. to Brussels. Wandered around taking pictures and went to an art gallery there. Stumbled into a ticket office where we found out we could get tickets for Carol King concert coming up in two weeks. Got wonderful seats in the third row. We were very excited. Finally got out of that surprisingly pretty city at 4.15 p.m. on a crowded train to Luxembourg. I'd had a few groceries along, so ate my supper of egg and tomato and onion pate sandwiches on the train and locals laughed at me. Arriving in Luxembourg at 7 p.m., we walked around looking for pastries. I'd heard they were good there. Finally, I got a rhubarb pie at the train station. and we got back on another train. It was heading for Genova where we switched for an overnighter to Pisa. Walked across town to the Leaning Tower. I gasped as I came around a corner and there it was. Big as life and looking ready to fall over any second. Ever neat. Had a picnic of liverwurst sandwiches and beer under the leaning side there in the grass. Then hurried back to the train station and took the 6 p.m. to Florence. Walked around trying to find a cheap pension. 
Had a tasty supper of soup, wine, ravioli, and lasagna there. Thursday began our walking tour of the city looking for the beauty everyone has told us about. I just want to eat ice cream. Finally got back to the train station and killed the last two hours in the cafeteria eating and waiting for a train at 8.20 p.m. heading for Vienna. Our compartment was full, but we enjoyed playing cards and drinking Chianti red wine and smoking cigarettes. Friday, March 26th. Vienna was hard to get oriented to. I had to buy a map, take a subway downtown, called Rick, someone we'd met on the train in Spain. We met in a gas house on the corner where we had delicious wiener schnitzel and beer and wine. We had more beers when he showed up and then headed off to a cafe he knew about that has live jazz entertainment. We were a little late for that, but we hung out there for a while and met an old fellow, an Austrian man who sat at our table. He was interesting. Had a dream to live with his Portuguese girlfriend in Brazil. He started talking to me and I enjoyed his stories. He was a pipe-smoking intellectual jazz player named Robert who finally talked us into following him to an American Latino bar for some calypso music. So finally we went and once there I had to stand around because it was full. I got fairly drunk and remember stealing my last full mug of beer out the door because it was 4 a.m. closing time. So out on the street I gave my mug to Robert who had already given us his phone number and wanted us to call him in the future. We went back to the hostel, stumbled into our room at 4.30 a.m. and passed out. Next day, or that day later, finally stirred and went out for a walk and a stroll down Maria Hilferstrasse eating ice cream and window shopping. Then 6 p.m. took the tram out to Rick's place again for supper, drank beer and talked and ate a fine meal. Sunday, coming down, walked all the way around town, finding breakfast, enjoyed a currywurst. Then strolled through parks and by the opera house, down grill, Parserstrasse, past the rat house, through parks. Stopped in at the Künstler for a few beers before the band started up, but couldn't stay or pay cover. Went back to our gas house and ate and drank. Some old ladies were being very friendly and bought us wine, toasting us several times. It was kind of cool, like being in a country bar. Food was good there again, too. Sure, I'm enjoying Austrian and German food. Lots of sausages or wieners and fries. Monday, March 29th. Took our bags to Westbahnhof, where we enjoyed a picnic breakfast. Shared some of the most delicious apple strudel I've ever had. Walked from there to the United Nations Organization City area. Also passed through Vienna Fairgrounds and in and had a quick a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Continued walking, eating ice cream, had supper at a cheap cafeteria, uh, quick beer at the Kunstler again, and decided to take the 8.50 p.m. to Frankfurt for a connection to Switzerland in the morning. After some Tuesday early morning rail changes, we were on our way to Lucerne and into the Interlaken area, hugely scenic with mountains and snow and turquoise lakes and green trees. But we ended up going to a little place called Grindelwald and staying in a little hotel and walking in the snow a lot. It was kind of a neutral time in Switzerland, hardly any drinking. Wednesday, March 31st, more hikes in the snow before getting out of there on a train to Interlaken and staying at Balmer's Hostel, which was a fun place. April 1st, after hearty buns and hot Swiss chocolate, it was back on the scenic train route to Lucerne, where we switched to Zurich and then to Munich, arriving there about 6.30 p.m., strolling through downtown directly, heading to the Hofbra House, and began drinking huge mugs of beer. At first it seemed like quite a dull and boring place until three German youths sat down with us. Then the evening became fun. They're from Bavaria and proud of it. The two guys were rowdy. The gal was pretty nice. Their English was really limited, so communication was difficult, but hilarious. We did much prosting, and suddenly they were buying us beer, then schnapps and liquors, etc. The place was getting lively. Soon we were standing and doing motions to the oompa-pa music. 
it was a cheap night for us. And we were slightly pissed when we tore ourselves away from the fun and frolic at 11 p.m. and walked back to the train station and got on the overnighter to Hamburg. <sighs> the next day, morning in Hamburg, having tea and goulash soup for breakfast at the train station, we were off to see a great photo show at a gallery. We'd been looking forward to this show of black and white photos by Henri Cartier-Bresson. We followed up with a tasty lunch of cold salads from a beautiful buffet spread in the small artsy art gallery cafe. Then hurried off to catch another train, leaving Hamburg for the last time, heading back to Köln and switching there to Eindhoven again for one more stay in the hostel there. Went out for a snack, a, taste, a final taste of the local sausages and fries with satay sauce and some Heineken beer. Saturday, April 3rd, up early and on the train to Brussels. Got there around noon, put our bags in storage and walked. I sat and drank beer and wrote postcards for quite a while there. It was a good afternoon. We went souvenir shopping, sat at a classy sidewalk bar in the Grand Place Square, then some food before we went off to the Carol King concert. We had excellent seats. Suddenly she came out alone and started playing piano and singing Tapestry as her first song. It was fantastic. Then her full band came on and they started to rock. It was good. At intermission I talked to a local chap we'd met here two weeks ago when we were buying tickets and he invited us to stay with him that night. The band continued in the second half and ended with a rousing encore of locomotion. Afterwards we went and talked to the photographer who took us for a drink. We had a tasty beer and then took the train out to his place. Which was great. We looked at photos with him for quite a while, and he had no beer, so I got sleepy, and we passed out there. Sunday, he took us for breakfast and walked us to the bus stop so we could get on a train and transfer to a train to Paris. Got to Paris in the afternoon and walked looking for a hotel, checked into the Hotel Central des Ecoles, and uh, Went out for a stroll around the crowded streets and had supper in a little restaurant of house wine and grapes. The next day we went for a long walk past the opera house to the Moulin Rouge, stopping at a sidewalk cafe for a beer and a rest in the warm sun, then on to Sacre Coeur for a look and a view of the beautiful city spread below us. Had a wonderful dinner that evening at an Italian restaurant, wine, salad and pizza. And Tuesday was our last full day in Paris. Watched um, street shows, magicians and buskers, went to art galleries, walked around a lot, and ended the day with some wine. After breakfast, we put on our packs and walked by the Louvre, through the Tuileries to the Place de la République, and north to Gare Saint-Lazare. Took the 12.35 p.m. train to Le Havre. Had a hard time finding the harbor there, but... Finally found the boat and boarded at 5 p.m. along with crowds of kids. We were on the Irish Continental Line's St. Patrick, and our ship left at 6 p.m. We said goodbye to France, sitting together with a Dublin lad named Paul and an American woman named Marie. We started drinking wine and went through two bottles before the others began giving in to sleep. I bought two more small bottles of wine before the cafeteria closed, and I started in on beer. An Irish chap was playing guitar and singing all kinds of good songs with a lively crowd, so I listened as I drank a Smithix and finally the topper, a glass of Guinness. It was getting pretty rough and rocky, so I stretched out on the floor, hoping I wouldn't be sick. The next day, in the morning, by 8 a.m., I couldn't sleep anymore and sat in a chair waiting for the others to wake up. It was very difficult for me to walk, so I stayed in my chair from then until late afternoon. We were supposed to arrive at Rosselaire at 2 p.m., but didn't dock until 6 p.m. After a customs check, we wandered into the harbor and the tourist office found a nice B&B &B before going for supper. Enjoyed a good meal at the Harbor Lodge restaurant of soup, hamburger and chips, strawberry cake, milk and tea while the sun set for the evening. Friday, April 9th, up at 6 a.m.
breakfast of porridge and then we caught a train. By noonish we were in Cork. It was a long hard walk from the train station before an old man befriended us and led us to the youth hostel. On the way we stopped for groceries and talked with locals learning that today was indeed a holiday, Good Friday, and no bars would be open. It looked like a dull first day in Ireland, but the sun was shining and it was warm. The hostel was deserted, so we left our bags in the hall and sat on the big lawn, soaking up the sun and eating our fresh bread with butter. We went for a walk along the lovely River Lee, and in the evening we did find a Chinese restaurant open and went for a good meal. I had a large egg roll, shrimp and mushrooms over rice, and two glasses of ale. Saturday, got up and fried my own eggs for breakfast in the hostel kitchen, the first time I'd done so on this whole trip. A group of us ate together and we rented bikes for the day. We got out of town on a road that was all uphill, but the scenery was really beautiful, green and lush. We rode and rode and stopped for lunch at a fine pub called the Blue Shark. I had oxtail soup, quiche Lorraine and chips and a beer and another stop later in the day at a roadside pub called the Five Mile Inn. We had a good rest and we each had a pint of Guinness. And a local drunk harassed us a little bit. He was pretty hilarious but got a bit annoying. So we got back on our bikes and did the last uphill before a long downhill coast into Cork. It was a relief to get back to town and back to the hostel for the night. Next day, a long walk back to the train station and left Cork at 12.45 and on to Trali. Then back to Killarney, intending to stay at the youth hostel. It was a three mile hike out of town, but we were assured we could sleep on some bit of floor there somewhere, as the whole town is full of weekend partiers and holidayers. We got through town and hitched a ride and got to the pretty old mansion that is used as a youth hostel there. It was packed. We didn't know where we would sleep, so I went to a nearby pub for a pint to read the paper and wait to find out. Monday. Well, I made it through that night okay. The very friendly and helpful woman running the madhouse hostel put me in a kitchen with two mattresses and lots of blankets, so I was snug and cozy. But sometime during the night I was awakened by lots of knocking and I got up and let in a drunk lad, then two more. They made a lot of noise before one passed out, the other two left. Eventually we got up and left the hostel around 10.30 for a long hike to the Gap of Dundee. It was a five mile walk but very scenic. We got off the beaten path and in a sheep pasture behind some hills. I had a bit of fun running around in the nude in the brisk mountain air, exposing myself to the trees and rocks. Then we went on by a babbling stream to a little lake and enjoyed the beautiful scenery. Came back to Kate Kearney's cottage for a beer and hitchhiked back to the hostel corner bar for another pint. In the evening, we were sitting in the reading room when in came two Irish young women who sat down beside us and decided they were going to take us to town for some drinks. So we were all on our way off to see what the nightlife there would be. We checked out two bars, both packed, the second having a live sort of country and western lounge act, a three-piece band that amused and delighted me. We had two swift pints of ale before we had to hurry back to the hostel before curfew. Next day, a hurried breakfast, and then we caught a bus to town to catch the morning train to Limerick, where we visited the tourist office, the People's Park, for lunch, walked downtown, and stopped for a pint, before walking out over the river on Ennis Road and beginning to hitchhike. Finally, just before the rain started, a man took us into the hinch. We were real glad to find a bed and breakfast there. We left our bags and walked around the corner to Kenny's pub, sidled up to the bar for pints of Guinness. Finally it was time to get back to the B&B for the night, but we had a quick look at the wild surf pounding the beach not 30 yards from our door. Wednesday, April 14th. We slept in but finally roused ourselves to go down 
The woman, uh, a mother of seven, had prepared a fine breakfast. Orange juice, tea, Weetabix, great brown bread, butter and jam, and a plate containing a fried egg, bacon, sausages, tomato, and mushrooms. I ate it all up as we chatted with the friendly mom and her kids played around us. Finally, we tore ourselves away, put on our packs, and continued out of town. Heading for the cliffs of Moher, we hitched a ride with a young fellow who'd rented a car in Limerick and was also going to see the cliffs. He was from Vancouver and had been traveling around just like us. So together we parked at the cliffs and started to look around. Fantastic sights, these sheer cliffs dropping 400 feet down to the pounding sea below, birds circling and gliding away down below us, beautiful. We took some pictures together and carried on, drove to Doolin and had a pint there while chatting with some locals. Then went on to Kilcoglin for more pints before cruising into Galway. About 6 p.m. went to the cellar pub for grub and Guinness. I had steak and kidney pie followed by apple pie and ice cream and a good visit with Dave Kelly, our driver, before he left, heading back to Limerick. We found a and b and then went back to the cellar for Wednesday night jazz and blues live with the Swingers. And they were good. Trombone player who sang rousing old swing jazz hits. Trumpet, bass, drums and keyboard. All locals. They played one long set and then packed it up so we went back to bed at Mrs. Walsh's. Thursday, April 15th, the last day of our year rail train passes. Mrs. W. knocked on the door and said, It's quarter to ten and I've started your breakfasts. So up I hopped. We had rashers, eggs, etc., etc. Ate and ate and chatted. Her sister-in-law and brother came in to visit. Then we got our bags and went to the train station for our last trip. Left Galway at twenty minutes to noon and rode across barren, dry and burnt fields to Athlone arriving at 1 p.m. for a two and a half hour wait before our connecting train to Dublin. So we left our bags and walked around a bit there. Then it was our final ride, the one and a half hour trip into Dublin. We really hurtled along at top speed, vibrating wildly. It was fun as we got off, slowly and sadly, in Dublin. It sure seemed as if our trip was that much nearer to being over.